just another comment review here on my channel. So, Gary, answer seems entirely too subjective, but would never doubt your words. Do the DR numbers back your theory? Are there more DORs due to oversleeping or due to the plethora of other areas of pressure they endure? Question, does the SEAL community place a premium on candidates that's able to pass selection without the assistance of a coach? So meaning like those you're, like yourself that dig deep down in the midst of trying and still never quit or the ones who have been, as you said, know all the answers to the test they are taking. I feel there has to be some dichotomy here. Great content as usual per, per usual. So, hey, Gary, man, here's the deal. I'm going to address a couple different things in this comment, try to shed a little bit more light. All of those numbers come straight out of my experience as the OIC of Class 217, man. And what I would see, man, first thing in the morning, there would be between, and this is the first probably month of training before we even started BUDS. So back then we had this thing called ramp up and the first thing you had was a 4,400 yard swim first thing in the morning. And the guys, like what I would see, man, first thing in the morning, them dudes would roll out of bed and we would have anywhere between five and 10 people just say, hey, they couldn't do it today. And they would they would march down to the compound, they would ring the bell and they'd be on their way, okay? So I, I saw the most people quitting. Um, I, I wouldn't say the most people quit during... Uh, the morning leave, but I would say a large majority of them make the decision in the morning to decide that they might as well quit before the day gets started. Now, that's not to say that you don't have a lot of people quitting on runs. Um, I don't think I've ever seen anybody quit on the swim other than the fact that they don't want to get in the swimming pool for some testing evolution like underwater knot tying or the 50 meter because they probably passed out before. Okay, so uh, numbers, nobody oversleeps really in buds. We all got roommates. Everybody gets up. Like, ain't nobody, we not leaving. And let, if we missing somebody, we, we already in their room waking them up. So that's just how it goes. We all had, uh, we had uh, bed buddies and room buddies. So if you got out of your room, you would stop by one of your room buddies' rooms, your swim buddy, and you would say, hey, man, y'all up. They'd be like, yeah, we up. Okay, then you go down to formation. Um, I talked about it a little bit earlier in the video. We had a lot of guys that were uh, joining this stretch crew in the morning. We had this little 30-minute stretch crew before training started. I personally wasn't involved in that, but as a class officer, I loved it. You know, my guys, anything my guys can do to be a little bit better in the day, and it helped them. You know, I just wasn't getting up 30 minutes earlier. Okay. Does the SEAL community place a premium on the candidate able pass selection without the assistance of a coach? So I put a comment back on your comment, but I'm going to talk about it here. Uh, here's what I'm going to say, man. I don't care how much I prepare somebody to go to SEAL training. They're not going to be able to make it through SEAL training unless they were made to be a SEAL. And that's the facts. Um, I'm not giving anybody the answers to the cheat code. The biggest thing that we're doing in my program is I'm teaching individuals how to learn how to learn. That is the biggest factor in my whole We Build Champions for Life program I teach people how to learn new skill sets very quickly and be able to do that skill set under a lot of stress, okay? Um, I'm not giving them the answers to the test. If you'll notice, if you, if you had the luxury of, of taking my master class, there ain't a lot of teaching in there. I'm going to teach uh, land navigation because I don't like how they're taught, and that's the only thing that I really teach. Now, we will work on skills needed to be able to be successful in SEAL training. The ability to hold your breath may be one of the biggest superpowers that you can possibly have. I was able to hold my breath for 330, 345 when I went out there. It absolutely helped me pass all the underwater evolutions. I don't think that's a cheat code. I don't think you're helping anybody out. You're just making them more prepared for the test. They still got to get through hell week. There is no cheat code. That place will dig down into the deepest places of your soul. And if you ain't supposed to be there, man, it'll expose you and you'll be on your way out of training. So no, no one is uh, upset. No one is, is banging me on helping out. Um, it's really just trying to make the community better, send more prepared people to SEAL training, try to get them to be uh, more understanding of what they're going to have to experience. My biggest 
you know, my biggest thing about buds is people show up unprepared and then they're not mentally hard enough to, to, to prepare enough to be there, you know, and they can't make it. Okay. So that's how that goes. Um, the other one, uh, knowing the answers to the test, that's pretty much the answer to that one. You know, it's just, uh, it, it's one of those places, man. I don't care how much I prepare somebody. They, they either got what it takes or they don't. And if they don't really have what it takes, I'm not going to mess with them for the most part. Um, we have a saying in the SEAL teams, you can always tell who's going to quit, but you can never tell who's going to make it. So if I know they're going to quit, then I don't mess with them. All right, man, Gary, I hope that helps you out. A little bit more clarity to your question. And as always, if you love this video, smash the subscribe button. And if you really, really double dog dare love this bad boy, share it with your friends. As always, have a great day, and we build champions for life.